there. Let's get our songbooks turned to 365. How great thou art, and he is, amen. Good to see you all in church this morning. Let's stand together. 365 in your songbook. Sing your very best. Lift it up. How great thou art. shall come when Christ shall come we shall come back the nation and take me home then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great the heart then sings my soul my Savior to that how great thou art he is God and if you're a Christian this morning you know the Lord aren't you glad you know him oh my he's depending on us in these last days always has but he's looking for us to stand tall as his people amen amen glad everybody's here glad you're here today's service Brother Jim Stoner please sir would you lead us as we pray Yes. The only words that we have for love for us. And uh, Lord, we come to you this morning mm. seeking uh, of your presence, Lord, your help, our infirmities, our needs, every need we have, Lord, you have an answer for us. Father, we trust you for it. Lord, we look forward to hearing from you this morning through your word. Thank you, Father, for your presence here today. We love you. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> I 
Songbooks, page 56. Let's sing the old rugged cross. Amen. Remain seated while we sing that. 56 in your songbooks. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true To the old rugged cross I will ever be true Gladly bear And he'll call me someday To my home far away Glory forever I'll share
wonderful day, wouldn't it? Yeah. Won't it? Amen. Good to see folks here this morning. Glad you can join us. Welcome those that are with us via the live stream as well. It's that time of year, busy time of year, right? right? With Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and everything coming up. A lot going on, so make sure you notice in your bulletins there. Teenagers, next Saturday is our teen activity. We're going to be meeting here at the church. We're leaving the church at 115. So if you're meeting us here at the church Make sure you're here at 115, and uh, we're going to be heading out to Culpeper there to New Life, and we have some different activities we'll be playing there and having some pizza. Uh, we're playing Capture the Flag, Volleyball. We're playing a game called, uh, I think it's called Assassin. Uh, it's not what you think, okay? Don't get scared, Mom and Dad. <laughs> what are you playing with my kids there? No, it's a fun game. It's, kind of, it's a different form of Capture the Flag, and uh, just having a good time with them, and we'll be back here probably around 6.30. Okay, so uh, meet us here. Now, some, of, some have asked if we can pick them up on the way out to there, so there's some we'll be picking up. But if you're meeting us here at the church, 115 is when we're leaving, okay? So don't forget about that. And also, the deadline to sign up for the adult Christmas banquet, uh, which is on December the 15th, the sign-up deadline is November the 20th. And that's these cards here. Make sure you get your, uh, turn these in to Miss Kay, along with the $10 per person. Uh, make sure you get that into her by November the 20th as well, okay? And then also... Just to kind of prepare you, yes, we are doing the food baskets this year, so uh, the, when we put them out at the end of the month there, just if you'd like to put some non-perishable items in there, just kind of start saving up now. When you go to the store, maybe pick a couple different things up that you can put in the box there. Those will be out there at the end of the month. And then also the post office will be out there at the beginning of December, so don't forget about that as well for your Christmas cards and such. We're just notifying people that those things will be out there. Okay, gentlemen, come on forward, and we'll take the morning offering. Brother Rhodes, if you would, say the blessing on the offering, please. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this uh, bright and beautiful Lord's Day you've given us here today, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be in God's house this morning, Lord. Looking forward to the preaching of your word this morning. Pray you feel our preacher full of grace and wisdom as he brings your word this morning. Now, Father, we ask your blessing on this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. to make here we have one uh, wedding anniversary they are not with us today maybe they're watching online but on November the 15th Conway and Judy Robinson will celebrate their 36th wedding anniversary God bless you dear folks and then we have someone else watching I know they watch online because they can't be here and that's the Houston's but Ina November 13th is having a birthday they're not normally here because of Brother Roger's uh, ongoing health problem, but uh, we wish her the best on her birthday, the 13th. And then this individual is here. Not normally on Sunday nights is when we recognize birthdays. Brother Walter Croson, you need to stand up. Would you do that, please? On the 16th, Brother Walter Croson is celebrating his birthday. Now, I don't have which one is on here. So, Greg's trying to send me a message, 82, wow, we, congratulations, brother, God bless you, glad he's feeling better, aren't you folks, amen, praise the Lord, all right, all right. why don't we go ahead and sing happy birthday to, can. yeah, can. Sure. let's all stand and sing happy birthday, brother Croson, amen, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Let's take our song books. The song is 542. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. 542 in your song books.
Sing that third stanza. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus. Yes, tis sweet to trust Jesus. Just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life. trust thee. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee. I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I put him can be seated. For he is so precious to me, so precious is Jesus my Savior. His praise all the day long with rapture I sing To Him in my weakness for strength I can cling For He is so precious to me I stand on the mountain of blessing at last. No cloud in the heavens, a shadow to cast. His smile is upon me, the valley is past. For he is so precious to me. For he is so precious to me. For he is so precious to me. Tis heaven below my Redeemer to know. For he is so precious to me. Praise Him because He's appointed a place Where someday through faith in His wonderful grace I know I shall see Him, I'll look on His face For He is so precious to me for he is so precious to me. For he is so precious to me. Tis heaven below my Redeemer to know. For he is so precious to me. Heaven below, my Redeemer to know, for He is so precious to me. Thank 
Thank you, Carter and Paul. God bless you. What a blessing. What a blessing. Turn your Bibles with me this morning to Colossians chapter 4, please. Colossians chapter 4. Well, I've got a lot to say in a short period of time to say it. And we're going to read the title to my message as we read the scriptures. We're going to read the complete chapter of Colossians chapter 4, okay? Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer. Notice now, he's given these instructions to the church at Colossae. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I also in bonds, I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and blood brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. And Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son, to Barnabas, touching whom you receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who is of the circumcision. These only are my fellow workers under the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. And Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Salute the brethren, which are in Laodicea, Nephthys, and the church which is in his house. And when this epistle is read among you, cause it to be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember my bonds, grace be with you, Amen. Go back with me to verses 12 and 13. This will be our text for today. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and then them in Heropolis. Look at the last part of verse 12 where it says, stand perfect and complete. And this phrase is the subject for today. In all the will of God. You bow with me in prayer, please. Father, we thank you. We praise you just to be here in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, we pray for your infilling, your power. Use us today for your name's honor and glory. God, I want this message to be a means of encouragement and strength to your people. And certainly we're going to leave out the need to come to know Christ should that person be here that needs to come to know Christ. Father, we just ask you to help us today. And I cannot remember the man's name, but I pray for the missionary family whose husband, I believe they're in Baghdad, uh, his life was taken this past week, leaves his wife and children. And uh, I know the Bartons, I believe he was a part of their wedding several years ago. This was totally unexpected and a tragedy in this family. God, give comfort. It is only you can encourage them and help them. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. This chapter of Colossians, we have an example. First of all, I want to give you these to help us to see in many different areas throughout the Word of God. We're given examples of people that love God, live for God, serve the Lord, and we have them listed here. Matter of fact, I'm going to mention in that chapter we just read, uh, there are several names. 
And, of course, the one we're going to be looking at today is Epaphras. Uh, but there's Tychicus, the believer who served others. If you look these names up, this is what you'll find. He's there in verses 7 and 8. And then there's Onesimus, the believer who sought to correct his past and make it right. Verse 9. Aristarchus, the believer who stood as a companion in trials. He helped out others. And then there's Mark, the believer who repented of his wrong and his failure to follow, to do as he was instructed. Number five was Justice, the Jewish believer who turned from religion to Christ. That's a good thing to do. Epaphras, the believer who fervently prayed and worked hard for the believers of his church. We'll get to him in in a moment. Then there was Luke, the beloved physician, in verse 14. Demas, the believer uh, who got in a backslidden condition. And then there's Nymphus, the believer who kept an open house, verses 15 and 16. Archippus, the believer who was given a special task and needed encouragement. And last of all, there was the Apostle Paul, the believer who was faithful to the point of suffering imprisonment, as most of us know. All of the will of God. All of the will of God. This book teaches, and we're instructed, even encouraged, the moment after we're saved, the will of God should be first... First and foremost, in our lives. Not my will, not somebody else's will, not the family's will, but God's will. The sweetest place on this earth for a Christian is in the center of God's will. Please hear what I have to say today. Epaphras' desire was that his church stand perfect, as the verse says, and complete in all the will of God. God's always dependent on his church, his people, those that he saves. But I believe we're living in a time that God's depending more on the church. You and me, I'm talking about the the local church. Those that honor God still preach salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach how we ought to live, serve God, separate from the world, living for God as best we can. All of the will of God. And I want to say this right up front. It is so simple. The will of God is so simple. Now, God calls certain different people to do special things like an evangelist, a pastor, a missionary some full-time Christian service, wherever it may be. <clears throat> but you can know the will of God. I've had people, days gone by, come to me and almost in tears, man, and maybe a couple were, but th- they were so concerned about <clears throat> the will of God in their lives. I do know it's a wonderful place to be. I believe you're looking at a man today. As a matter of fact, I know I'm in the perfect will of God. Have been since God saved me shortly after. No better place in the world to be than in the center of God's will. I said that, but you're going to hear it several more times before we're through. Now, we look at this verse of Scripture, and down in that latter part of the verse that you may... What's that next word? Verse 13, or 12, I'm sorry. That you may stand. That's the word I want you to see. Stand. What, how could we break that down to make it clearer to us? It's simply having determination. It's determined. That's what you do when you stand. You're determined that here's where I stand. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to honor God in everything I do. I'm going to rear my family in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I'm going to work my job to God's glory. But it's going, all going to be standing for what I know is right. Stand, and then the next word. Come on, folks, talk to me. You're not not passed out on me, going to sleep. Stand perfect. See, preacher, nobody's perfect, and you're right. But it means to stand, to be mature. To be mature. Grow up. 
develop in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But to reaching the goal of God's will. And then it says, stand perfect and complete. Complete. Years ago, matter of fact, my family and I moved in the house we're living in on May the 5th, uh, 1980. But in building that house, it was a dream come true. I remember one day I was dating my wife. You're looking at a man that until I was married never owned a car. So if I was going to date my wife, I had to go to her house. I had to butter up real close to his dad, you know, or her dad and mom. Down from their house and sitting on the side of the hill was an old log barn. And uh, we were just sitting there talking. Beautiful day. It was, it was just beautiful. And we were talking about having a home of our own one day. And uh, I said, if we'll be faithful and uh, we'll let the Lord lead us, guide us, one day we'll have our own home. She kind of teared up. And I said, well, I didn't mean for you. She said, that would be a real, real blessing. And... uh, I can't explain, I can't make it any more clear than the fact that the day that the man came, you know, your house has got to be, it used to be, they had to be inspected and a sticker left. And if you weren't home, they'd put the sticker on your door, ready to move in. Ready to move in. My, what a blessing that was. I could tell a lot of stories about that, don't have time and you don't care anyway. So there you are. But uh, there was the home. Folks, one day, whenever, I don't know, we're going to go to our eternal home. And it can't be compared to anything we have here on this earth. Since my wife went to heaven, I've been doing a little bit of remodeling, doing some things. And she said, well, it still works. Why do we want to do that? My wife was kind of frugal, and uh, she was oh, she was a miser. I mean, she didn't spend anything less necessary. Not I'm saying it's good things about it. She probably kept me from a lot of trouble. But um, there was all complete. But our eternal home has been complete for a long time. Only the saved go to this place. Only people that know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior go to this eternal home that we have in heaven. So, being complete, stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So we got this determination. And if you're going to be the servant that God wants you to be and the Christian that so the world can see Christ in you, it'll be because you determined to do so. Absolutely. You don't do it haphazardly. You don't do it when you feel like it. It's something that you do, and God's a part of your life every day, 24-7. So we stand perfect and complete in the Lord. Now, every pastor worth his salt has a burning desire for all those under his care that God is called to lead. Every pastor wants his people to understand all the will of God. How true that is. Wonderful when someone comes to know Christ as their Savior and see them follow the Lord in baptism and start going to church and living for God. Only by doing that can you know God's will in your life. Only You can't stay at home. Matter of fact, I don't believe it's God's will, and I thank God for every person watching online today. It's good to have you there. Glad you're there, and you're doing it, I hope, because you have to. But the idea thing is get up on Sunday morning, get ready, and go to church. Now, 
Thank God we have it for those that can't, like I said. But we need to understand, and we can, it is so simple to understand the will of God. And then once we know that, and we know it's God's will, then we undertake to do that, perform the doing of it. I believe Paul says there in 2 Corinthians, who is there talking about uh, missions giving, but we undertake to do the will of God. Here's what I'm going to do. Now, with that said, undertaking the will of God, understanding the will of God, folks, and I'm speaking to you young people here today. Well, I'm speaking to everybody. Listen, <clears throat> don't underestimate the will of God. The way of the transgressor is hard. The sweetest, most wonderful place you can be in your life is in the will of God. I mean, everything you do, the will of God. The will of God. There you're under, I like to say, under the umbrella of God's blessings. And he will bless. He will guide you. He will lead you. Understanding. And let me emphasize again. Every person, even to the youngest to the oldest, can understand. We read it in the Bible. Here's what God says. That's what God wants us to do. Perfect will. Right there. There it is. And we can do that. Now, we want to understand, and I believe there are some, uh, maybe some more willing than others, say, Preacher, I just don't really understand <clears throat> uh, what you mean by being in the will of God. And they're sincere. I, I believe that. I really do. Well, God has laid out in his word what we've got to do to know what his will is. Of course, certainly you've got to be saved. You've got to be born again. And you've got to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. And then you're going to <clears throat> read your Bible every day. You're going to pray every day. And guess what? Last but not least, you're going to go to church. Now, unless you do that, you'll never know the will of God for your life. Those are what you might say, the A, B, C's, all capital letters, and then as God leads, we know his leading because we're doing these things. We're praying, we're reading his word, and he leads us and he shows us, and this is God's will for my life. God's will. So important. Makes good sleeping nights too, by the way. Really does. The will of God. Now, first of all, let me give you the negative understanding to God's will. The negative understanding of God's will. God's will is never, 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 never contrary to the scriptures. Never, never. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, I, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will. Okay? Never contrary to the Scriptures. Doing the will of God is never contrary to the Holy Spirit. Do you know who He is? Now, preacher, you, you've said that before. I've said a lot. At my, my age, I've said a lot. At one time or the other. Holy Spirit is a person. Well, preacher, I don't believe I've ever seen him. Have you really tried? Have you ever seen him work? No, I've never seen the Holy Spirit. He does a lot of impressions, but I never heard him speak audibly. But he is real. He is real. However, he is only as real as we'll let him be. But it's God's will to let him have complete control of our lives. At one time, years and years ago, I was going to get my private pilot's license. My brother in the Lord, Brother John Dixon, down Hampton, Virginia, he belonged to the Civil Air Patrol. 
Well, he could go down and get a plane any time he wanted to if there was one available, and here we go. And from time to time, he would uh, let me have the controls. And uh, he said, boy, the insurance must have been paid up. Probably was. Then one time he said, they want to go to North Carolina with me? I said, sure. He said, I'm going down to see my brother. I said, okay. And so we had checked out a nice Cessna air, airplane. Boy, that thing was sharp. And so we uh, took off. He flew down there and, and uh, stayed a while, and we were coming back. And uh, just humming along. He said, you want to take over? I said, you're going to make me nervous. He said, no, if I didn't think you could do it, I, I, would, I wouldn't do it. So they did. So I took the stick. He said, you see that little round circle up there, and it's got a line on it? And there's another line. looks like it's kind of behind it a little bit. He said, keep them even, equal to one another. And I, he said, just go left a little bit. And I did that, and, of course, the line moved up. And back. It seemed pretty simple to me. But, you know, he wouldn't let me land that thing. And I'd watched him, and I was confident I could do it. Sometimes your confidence can overweigh your better judgment, you understand? So now he, he, took, he took us in. It's kind of like when you get saved. Now God doesn't ever leave us nor forsake us. When we get saved, God says, here, take the stick. Take the control. Take the control. Let it become a part of your thinking and your doing and the way you lived, where you go, where you go and where you don't go. It's called life. It's called life. Okay? Never contrary to the Scriptures, never contrary to the Holy Spirit, and it's never contrary to the church. I'm convinced even if these, this age and it's coming faster than I want it to and it causes me to think, but it's okay, it's that time of life, the time is coming that one day, one year from this coming May 5th, I'm going to resign, I'm going to step aside. It's going to be one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But those times in life come. They come. I've got to now, if I'm in the category where I'm known as an old man. I have many people tell me I don't look it. Either they're lying or trying to make me feel good. I don't know. But I do feel good. I do. I really do. Boy, I'm, I'm clicking along very well. But at this age, you never know. You know what might. Uh, I worked all day yesterday out in my yard and all of that and went and rested a while. And then I went and got me some supper. That's dinner, by the way. You sit down. Understanding God's will is never contrary. The church. In 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 5, And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. Will of God. It is so important. It is so necessary. So you cannot separate the church from the will of God. So we have the negative understanding, and then there's the positive understanding. For instance, this is so simple. Salvation is the will of God. The Bible says it's not His will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. Every sinner can be saved that wants to be saved, convicted by the Holy Spirit of God. It's the will of God. Who gave Himself for our sins that He might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Galatians 1 and verse 4. 
It's the will of God. It's the will of God that people be saved. It's the will of God if you've got lost family members that they be saved. If they die lost without Christ, they're out of the will of God. Simplest way I know to say it. But if they want to be saved, they repent of their sin, God will save them. It's the will of God. Has anyone ever asked you, Brother Shelton, to explain what happened after you got saved and explain to you what it meant to be separated? Everybody ever asked you to explain that? You've preached that before. Separated. When you get saved, when you get blood washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are no longer the same. You are a new creature in Christ, and God's will is the most important thing in your life. All the flesh don't want that. One of the hardest things that a pastor ever does is try to teach people, from the Word of God, of course, after they're saved, Paul said, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will be a father unto you. Something happened when I got saved. Something happened when you got saved. Something happened. Your life changed. Let me put it this way. Your want to changed. If your want to hadn't changed, I'd do some serious checking up on my relationship with God. Not trying to be mean, I'm just trying to be real. Real. I can't explain when I got saved. My wife got saved first. We're not going to all that detail. Some of you have heard it so many times you don't want to hear it again, but I remember when I was saved, I, the baptistry was broke down and and, and the pastor said, I'm not sure, it was a pretty serious problem, but uh, I couldn't wait to get in the baptistry. Now, there are some people you'd almost have to beg to get them to get baptized. Well, I never had my head underwater. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt you. You're down and back so quick. But if it's God's will, and that's what God wants me to do, I'll do it. Some people, I mean, they turn all shades of colors. When they go down that baptistry and water's up to about here and they know they're going to go under the water, some people's heads have never been under water. Never. Never. And I try to calm them down and all of that, and I try to put my hand over their nose and mouth so they don't get strangled, but down and back. I mean, it's over with before they really realize what's going on. But I wanted to do it. I wanted to follow the Lord. I wanted to do what God wanted me to do. But sanctification, for this is the will of God. Get that? For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, set apart for God's use, that ye should abstain. And this verse is from fornication. Well, from sin, period for that matter. Salvation is the will of God. Sanctification is the will of God. Serving is the will of God. Anything I can do for you, preacher? Anything I can do to help out? What can I do to help serve in the church? Boy, I hadn't heard that in a long time. Long time since I heard anything like that. Today, people just don't have time to serve the Lord. I'm being a little facetious there. You do if you take the time. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. 1 Peter 3, 17. So there's the positive side. Now, let me touch on two other thoughts, and we're going home. And sometimes we're called on to suffer, and that could be the will of God. So there's the understanding of the will of God. And then there's the understanding, understanding of the 
will of God. <clears throat> I know this is adding on like layers on a cake, but it takes obedience. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. John seven seventeen. It takes obedience to do the will of God. Rebellion will never get the job done. I have a feeling that I'm speaking to some people here in course online. Obedience is a problem. For a lot of professing Christians. It's a problem. Since I was saved, I've gone to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Well, why'd you do that? They were having church. They were having church. That's where I was supposed to be. I just got saved, knew Christ as my Savior, and that's, that's where I needed to be. By the way, you'll never mature or grow very much if you're a morning glory on Sunday morning. It won't happen. I'm telling you, it won't happen. There's something else more important that's on Sunday nights that you'd rather do, on Wednesday nights something else you'd rather do. Now, sometimes people's jobs or whatever, they're hindered, they can't. But as a general rule, most people could. But the want to is not there. Folks, I'm, just, I'm telling you the truth. I'm just telling you to think about your spiritual life and put God first. And it's not just going to church, putting God first. I mean, it's your complete life. Hear my Lord, send me, Isaiah said. Hear my, convict me. Hear my, lead me in the paths of righteousness, which he said he would do if we'd let him. It takes obedience. It takes heart. It takes heart. Let me ask you a serious question. Is your heart really in your church? Is your heart really in being a child of God? Is your heart really in rearing your family in the fear and admonition of God? Your heart's not in it. It won't be done. Right. Takes heart. Takes heart. Right. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Yeah. Ephesians 6.6. 6. From the heart means, if I can add a little more to that, enthusiasm. Excited about serving the Lord. Wanting God to use me for His glory. It means fire. There's some fire there. I gotta do. This is something i got to do. When I met my sweetheart, <laughs> as I said earlier, until after we were never owned a car. And when we were dating, I didn't have a car. I went to her house every Sunday. And I walked from my house to her house. And if I showed you that trail, you wouldn't believe it. You'd think I was lying to you. And I walked back home and it day too late, and it was pitch dark. And I walked through the woods and across this one particular mountain. The boogeyman never did get me. <laughs> you know why I did that? I loved that woman. I loved her with all of my heart. What's a little walk? And I'm glad I did. I don't regret a step of it. That's for a human individual. Well, what about God that made the universe? What about the God that made you and gives you air to breathe and food to eat and a bed to sleep on? What about that? Does he ever do anything for you? He said, without me, you can do nothing. He did. And then it takes prayer. Romans 1.10, 
It says here, making request, if by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you, unto you. Also Paul said that in Romans 1.10. And quickly, it takes sensitivity. Sensitive, are you right now, are you sensitive to what you're hearing? The Holy Spirit will help you understand if you'll let him. Oh, yes. Oh, he will. Sensitivity, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Romans 8, 27. And yes, and I like, I've always liked this word. It takes determination. Yes, sir. Oh, Satan will see to it that you're not so determined and that you, you're not going to do this and you're not going to do that. You better be more concerned about what you're going to do than not doing. So here's what I'm going to do. When I got saved after we were married and the children come along, I felt it my God-given responsibility to take my family and go to church. Amen. What am I going to do at home? What am I going to do that? They learned to stay at home. When they had their families, they learned to stay at home. That's what happens, Brother Galantine. But the Bible says train up a child in a way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And there's, there's understanding of the will of God, the understanding of uh, his undertaking, and, and then understanding, and then don't underestimate the will of God. I think I referred to that. But quickly, let's don't underestimate, folks, salvation. John 3, 7, not, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Must. There's no option. And the world passeth away, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And we have need of patience. After that we've done the will of God, we might receive the promise. You serve the Lord faithfully, and down the road as you get older, you, know, you won't regret a minute of your serving the Lord and doing what God wants you to do. The opposite, down the road, you're going to regret it. You will. Folks, I've talked to a lot of folks laying on the bed that never got up off of down through these years, and their biggest regret that didn't serve God, even when they could, they didn't. And that's one of the biggest sorrows they have. Getting ready to leave this life, all of a sudden it got important. But now they're infirmed and old and can't. Let me ask you something. A very serious and honest question. Are you in and doing the will of God in your life? His desire is that we do all of his will. All of it. That's what he wants us to do. You know, in light of what he did for you and me, it seems to me like it would be the least we should do. Yeah. Let's bow our heads, please. Heads bowed, eyes are closed. Yeah, let me ask you, really, a, a less redundant, I mean, question, but are you really concerned of what you heard the preacher preach today? Are you concerned about all the will of God in your life? Well, preacher, I do this, I do that, my job, my this, that, and the other. I mean, you can, well, you mentioned 100,000 things, but again, I say, if we couldn't do it, God wouldn't tell us to do it. Everybody's got a different lifestyle, different kind of job, different hours they work. But then there's 
God, the one that saved us, gave his son to die on the cross of Calvary. Folks, we'll die owing God. We will. While we're alive, while we have health that we can, they'll come, you may not have that health. I'm not saying it will. I, I'm not, I don't know anything about that. But while we do have health, while we can, we need to do it. Anyone with our heads bowed or eyes closed, your heart's heavy, you've heard the word of God. Now, I'm not asking the reason to lift your hand, but you and God know about it. And if you lift your hand for a prayer when I pray a moment, in just a moment, I'll pray for you. I'm not, of course, I'm not going to call your name. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. But you, God knows, and, and I'm the only one looking. Preacher, pray for me. Would you lift your hand up where I can see it? I see hands. All, I see hands everywhere. Okay. You recognize, you see the need. God can take care of that need, Christian. But you've got to be willing. You've got to let him do what he wants to do. Maybe someone here today, you're lost. You don't know the Lord. Would you lift your hand? I'll pray for you. Preacher, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven when I leave this life. Will you pray for me? All over the building. I see one hand. But there may be a special need in your heart today, and you really need... Prayer, would you lift your hand? Preacher, I, I wish you'd pray for me. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see hands. Yes, yes, yes. Let's all stand together, please. <clears throat> Dear Father, you've seen the hands that's been lifted, and for what reason, you know what they are, too. Lord, I praise we sing here this great old song. Have thine own way, and there's not a better thing we could do than let God have his way in our lives. Right. God, please help these that's lifted their hand. Maybe some that didn't lift their hand. They know they need to come. I pray they would. Just have your blessed way and will. Maybe somebody needs to believe that this is where God wants you to serve the Lord, wants to be a part of the church. Come. We'll talk to you about it. Do it the way we do it here. We do it scripturally. God help us, I pray. I pray in Jesus' name for his honor and glory. Amen. 155 in your hymnals. If you need it, let's sing together. Come as God's spoken to you. remain bowed please while they play did you do what the Lord wants you to do this morning that's what we've been talking about all this time this morning God's will whatever he spoke to your heart about it's his will God will never lead us wrong he'll never lead us to do the wrong thing but that which just draws us closer to himself
invite you to lift your eyes. Thank you for listening. Amen, amen. You do know the will of God's important, don't you? I'm not talking to people that, no, they, you know, you're smart people. You know, you know, and I, but not because I preach it, but you, you know you heard the truth this morning, right? You heard the truth. Right. I didn't have to go searching for something, and I've never gone online to prepare a message. I got enough right here. That junk on a lot of it online, not all of it's junk, but most of it is, but I want to do what God wants us to do here in Trinity Baptist Church. Amen, amen, amen. Good to see Brother Young and his wife both. Amen. Looks like he's feeling pretty good. You are. Amen. Praise the Lord, brother. Dismiss us in prayer, Brother Young. Amen. God bless you.